everyone. Um, I, well, everyone's basically covered everything. <laughs> I, I, can I show the scarf? Vivian made this. Uh, it's about Julian. So. Point by point, uh, the injustices about uh, Julian's case. And we miss her dearly. And Vivian was, was such a courageous person, and she was, a, she was really a leader. And it got me thinking about how important uh, each and impactful courageous people are. You know, whether um, they're someone high profile like Julian or Vivian Westwood or just a regular person, they have the capacity to, to lead and to, to compel. Um, and campaigning isn't just about going on a march every few months. It's a, it's a daily thing, you know, it's about telling everyone you know, finding the right occasion, but um, telling people about what you care about and why you care about it. Simple as that. Um, it's not about slogans. I think recently there's been a lot of, um, there's been a lot of progress in the campaign. I mean, it's been building and building, and the October Hands Around Parliament was absolutely amazing, and today, again, has been extraordinary. I mean... I was, I was looking back, you know, we were behind the banner, and as far as the eye could see, uh, there was this incredible carnival, and... Uh, I was watching the people who were just, you know, going out uh, about the town on a Saturday evening, and they were, the response was so positive. Everyone was filming, they, w they were trying to find out what it was about, uh, they were engaged, you know, and I think this, this carnival has had an enormous uh, impact on, on central London today, so yes, we were we were thousands marching, um, and many thousands more who saw the message and who, uh, and who are now interested and want to find out more. So thank you. <laughs> tell, tell all your friends and colleagues and, uh, and family about what success uh, this was today. and. Uh, and encourage them to come next time because we need to build and build until until the movement is so big uh, the, the those in power and the courts uh, realize there's no there's nowhere else to go but to free join. <laughs> There's been some really wonderful events. Um, the Belmarsh Tribunal that Jer Jeremy Corbyn was talking about uh, was a huge success. Uh, the press club was rampacked. Uh, you know, it was, uh, and, and the speakers were fabulous. Uh, and uh, I think Julian's case is impossible to ignore anymore. And it might be the case that for the media, this is this is being ignored here in this country, but. Sorry. Um, in a way, it's because it's bigger than them. They don't know how to talk about it because it is bigger than them. And then eventually they're, you know, 
the, we have the, the joint statement by the five uh, by the five publications, which is a, a huge step forward. Um, and I think uh, it's, there's a complete con consensus within the media that Julian should not be extradited and that he should be freed. Uh, but the media should be speaking louder. But regardless, WikiLeaks 13 years ago started a revolution in the media. Uh, and it became bigger than The Guardian, bigger than The New York Times, bigger than Der Spiegel, right? And that's why, partly why Julian was attacked by those very publications in the beginning. Because WikiLeaks journalism had surpassed by uh, a long shot uh, what those publications had achieved and how they were doing things. And it started a revolution that we can see now. There's so much independent media, people get their news uh, from many sources, not just one and not just the official one. Uh, and that's a healthy development. And that's in, in large part thanks to Julian. Julian also, through WikiLeaks, privileged the truth over commentary. Commentary is fine, as long as it's based on the truth. So there have been many uh, very good events, the Belmarsh Tribunal, uh, and I've been doing things like speaking to uh, a very interesting organization that's small, but uh, very, uh, has, a, has a very good um, uh, um, purpose, which is to demilitarize uh, education, to stop um, arms companies uh, from funding research um, at universities. And there's also the um, environmental groups who are, have, have become aware of what Wikileaks has done to publish, um, uh, to expose how um, oil companies and so on, uh, lobby countries, uh, to, to take policies uh, that are detrimental to the environment and to the countries, detrimental to, to each country's individual self-interest um, out of, uh, well, for, for political expediency. So uh, there are different movements that are becoming aware of, of Julian's importance and relevance of the WikiLeaks publications and that actually uh, that Julian's imprisonment is... Uh, an attempt to an attempt to, to punish the messenger for uncomfortable truths that affect all of us in many different areas of life. I think you probably most want to hear how Julian's doing. Yes. And he's in a difficult situation. Um, and he's a very strong person, and he's human, and that means that there are good days, and there are bad days. Good days is probably an overstatement, but sometimes it's easier to cope than others. And just this week, uh, we were on the phone, and he told me that the cell above him had been flooding. <clears throat> so it was dripping into his cell. And specifically, there were several uh, uh, leaks coming onto his bed. Uh, and I asked him, well, how are you gonna sleep? Uh, because they had, uh, the, the prison guards had put some um, buckets or something on the bed to, to, to uh, c collect the, the leaks. Uh, he had three buckets on the bed, and they were in, they weren't all in one corner, they were like in different parts of the bed. And I said, so how are you going to sleep? And he said, well, maybe if I contort my body and do like an L shape, then maybe I can sleep on the bed. And then uh, the next day, he said the, the water had evaporated, but had let, let, 
had formed some stalagmites. So this kind of cementy water had, had evaporated and then formed these like cement pyramids or something like that in these buckets. So that's, that's Julian's day-to-day -day existence. That's what he has to deal with apart from fighting this enormous uh, legal battle. Uh, and that's the reality of a place like Belmarsh. He shouldn't be there. And I think the reason, part of the reason why the movement to free him is, has so much force behind it is because it goes to very basic instincts because we're human beings, because we can reason, we can distinguish justice from injustice. And what Julian's going through, what's being done to Julian, is such an enormous injustice that whoever is denying it is denying it because they are part of the problem. They are part of the ones who have, uh, for, or for some reason, in some way, are taking part in his torture. I wanted to <laughs> end in an upbeat way. Uh, and that is that I, I am convinced, I'm convinced that we will win this. There's no other way. Politicians, those in charge, they know this is a political case. Um, they know that the courts know this is a political case. It's a bit embarrassing for them, right? It's embarrassing because it is a political case. And now they have to, they've, they've got themselves in a position um, where it's, it's clear that the, that the law has been abused, uh, that the UK is keeping the most important political prisoner, well, the most famous um, and one of the most uh, significant uh, cases of, of political imprisonment in history uh, is right here in London. And they have to find a way out. And the louder we shout, and the more we grow, the quicker Julian will be released. So I ask you to keep on campaigning for Julian, not just in the protests, but day to day, keeping on your mind, think about what you can do. Um, and also, if you're not on the don't extradite uh, email list, please sign up. Uh, read Neil Smeltzer's book, The Trials of Julian Assange. Read Stefania Maritzi's book, uh, uh, the, the secret power and stay engaged and I'll see you again.